I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, please go check out the link in the description for some awesome TGS merch. Not all Marukus were created equal. Some are particularly special and some are just special. This particular one is edging towards the particularly special. This is a Maruku XLR, the Gilsan XLR, which is made exclusively for Gilsan Sports Limited. Let's have a look. So essentially, before we get into this, this gun is as standard a Maruka as you could ever want, but it is just custom spec. So we're going to talk through some of the custom specs that it's got. There's nothing particularly special about the internals of this action. Uh, at the back you have a 15mm pad. It's got very little gives a hard pad. I personally would have preferred to see a thinner pad and more wood, but that's just personal preference, right? The stock link with its trigger in the forward most position is 14 and 3 quarters, which means overall this gun can be brought back down shorter, but unfortunately can't go that much longer. It's a little shorter than standard. You have grade 5 American Black Walnut, and as you can see, it's pretty tasty. It's um, extremely tasty, actually. It's a lovely, lovely bit of walnut. Hand checkered as every Maruku is, and the same grip. No palm swell just that ambidextrous universal grip. In terms of stock measurements, you're running at one and three eighths and two and a quarter, so it is quite high. That mixed with the fact that it almost has adverse cast, that's how straight it is with the rotation of the stock, it almost has cast on of about an eighth of an inch, just over an eighth of an inch. It's actually quite hard in the face. So if you're expecting a gun that's going to be particularly easy to mount and favorable like a, a Mark 60 would be, you know, quite low and quite open. This is not going to be, this is a dedicated high bird gun. This takes proper head commitment to the gun to go. It's, it's nice. However, I expect most people who buy this will end up wanting to have a little bit of cast put in it. In terms of stock finish, it is the very standard gloss, true oil-esque finish. And you have a little silver oval in the bottom there. Overall, lovely, teardrops, everything lovely. The only thing I could pick a hole in with this gun is there is perhaps not quite enough cast and there is too much pad for my liking. But again, it's a personal preference game, right? Moving on to the action, this is where it starts to get particularly special, apart from the fact that they've put this custom spec and custom spec stock on there. Yeah, first thing, you have an adjustable trigger. This gun is set up as a high bird gun. And that's pretty much what it is, an out and out high bird gun. Adjustable trigger, so first off you can actually set it and customize that bit for yourself. Great, sometimes when it's colder, I like a shorter thing, I don't want to be having to stretch and extend my hands to get on a trigger to make it super sensitive, I want to get my finger around it, probably in gloves, and get hold of it. And actually that's quite a nice touch. That said, I don't think I've ever adjusted an adjustable trigger gun after the first week of only one, but it's nice to have it, and, and certainly to be able to set it up for yourself, to be able to use all of that grip that you can. The engraving pattern is the particularly special bit, so let's pop it off the action so we can show you properly. So it's a very different style, and like most Marukus, this is a rolled on engraving that is then picked out by hand. So you have the scroll work in the back that is rolled, mixed in with these deep, exaggerated cuts that catch the light absolutely lovely. You have big acanthus scrolls with these sort of bouquets, if you like, in the middle. Not particularly refined, quite flashy, but in itself, absolutely lovely. It's really nice to see a Maruku with something different than the standard grade five Maruku uh, engraving on it. You know, the English Fields was a bit different, but that's the first time they ventured differently for a while. I am looking forward to what they bring out next year, but this is a nice intermediary flavor of what is possible. And as you can see across all of the engraving, you have all of the shadowing cut by hand, and it is. Is the best of both worlds you know this this gun probably still takes ten, eight or ten hours to engrave so that's that that's still a work of art in itself as opposed to some of the cheap guns which takes five seconds of rolls it straight on and, and job done so you still have that essence and beauty of a hand engraved gun plus it's something a bit different which is nice i i really like it and i hope you agree i mean look at that top lever the way that top lever is engraved actually is probably one of my favorite bits of engraving on the gun the top Look there on the top of the action faces there on the fences. It's um it's pleasant, right? Anyway, that's enough wax and lyrical about that. I do love the fact these are hand hand checkered because you can see all of the 
the little mistakes and the slip lines, and everything like that, and how it doesn't join perfectly. And that, that's, I think, a beauty in itself. You don't want it to be too perfect. Uh, before we put it back together, let's focus on the barrels. And I am sorry for moving through this rather quickly, so I am going to slow down. Um, the barrels are fixed choke barrels. They are bought 18.4, nominally bored at 76 mils. So they're a three inch chamber with 18.4 bores, which means it's quite tight. They are choked full and full. However, I am just about to check that right now. Thirty-nine foul. I'd say that was full and full, a true full and full, which is quite a delight. Everything else about these barrels is indeed a standard Maruku barrel. It's nice to have them full and full. Perhaps you might want them opened up at some point, but there is no pressure to do so. Ejector system and everything else is just a standard Maruku. The final piece to look at is the forend. It is a standard dimension Schnabel forend. As you can see, you have the same engraving pattern cut here, a mixture of rolled with those deep cuts put throughout. It's a really nice thing, and I really like these. His stippled background, it's a lovely touch. It really is a lovely touch. It's a really well specced and really well put together thing. So in terms of overall weight, it is a bit of a lump. Certainly it's the thing you pick up and you notice this is an over eight pound gun. This is an eight pound two gun over the scales. A little bit pernickety perhaps. There's not a huge amount of central weight, but that's always been a bit of a Maruku problem. You just, they just balance well and you have to live with that. They don't balance perfectly because, well, trying to find an eight and a bit pound gun that balances perfectly is gonna cost you a lot more than one of these, which is 3,600 pounds. So it's just a little bit more. Essentially, it's the ultimate hybrid between a Mark 38 and a Mark 60. It's what everyone does when they buy a Mark 38 trap, they turn it into a one of these. If they buy a Mark 60, and one second more serious, they buy the Mark 60 High Pheasant, which is kind of also basically one of these, but a little less special and a little different, and the stock dimensions are a bit different. So not entirely the same when you have full and three quarter as opposed to full and four. It is, however, an option. It's a nice option as well for somebody who wants a slightly different engraving pattern. That is a very pretty engraving pattern with BC Maruku XLR on the bottom. The final note, how does it handle? Well. Wow. If you can imagine anything less than bloody good for the money, <laughs> immensely actually. That mixture of balance and weight just lends itself to feeling very planted, but with that balance, it's still, still extremely movable. Would I want to shoot it all day, walking around and doing anything? Probably not, but for a gun for someone of a bit of a larger frame who can carry it all day without too much gripes, or if you're just shooting a you know, standard driven day, we can put it back in the bag for most of the time, leave it in the car for a bit. It's a hell of a gun. You know, if I custom spec it, it might be a little different. But I didn't, and I'm not complaining because it really is nice. And it is pretty. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.